we had faith during that time. We believed in Jesus Christ during those times. Yeah. We believed in God during those times. We were Christians during those times. The times when we was a Christian was the worst years that we had. Yeah. It was the worst years yeah. of, the, of our lives of what we've had when we were Christians. I, we went through all that. Yeah, and I, I know, oh yeah, and the thing with the, the church that you, that you were attending where, um, what was messed up with the church he was going to was that I was Catholic, so I went to a Catholic church, and he was um, Pentecostal, so he went to Pentecostal church. Um, and so they didn't like the fact that I was Catholic, that I was a Christian going to like a Catholic church. They didn't like that. Christians versus Christians. Ain't that fucked up. And they, if I was going to get married in their church, they said that I had to be saved, whatever the hell that means, in their, in their church. church. Then we could get married in their church. So basically, Damn. who's the God now? Who's God? Who's Jesus? They want to be Jesus. They do. They want to be the God. Yeah. They are God. They are Jesus. And they are, there is even an occasion they where... They know Jesus and no God. It's about them being God. About them being Jesus. They tell you what to do. Yeah, there was even an occasion where they wanted us to break up. And I was like, you know, oh, and yeah. that's what... Yeah, they said to me that, well... We don't, we won't recognize your marriage, and, um, you know, you guys should, uh, you know, shouldn't be together, because guys say no shacking up and things like that without being married. There's plenty of homeless shelters for her to go to. That's what the pastor's wife said. And who, she's who a has, Christian. Who has a Christian, who has Bible studies, who if you go to her for prayer, she'll go over and lift her hands up over top of you, or touch you and go, make all those damn Holy Ghost sounds. Like, God's really coming through her. But that shit is bullshit. Know how I know? She needed a job. About five, seven times we went there. Okay? After she graduated. Got a degree. Job. Okay? She did her due diligence. <laughs> yeah. And all that Holy Ghost prayer <laughs> power that's supposed to be evident through their tongues and speaking in tongues. No job. No yeah. job. And, and I'm times. talking about... 500, I'm not shitting you. It was on the wall back there. Okay? Piece of paper that said 100. Another piece of paper. 100. Another piece of paper. 100. 500 jobs. Yeah, I got so sick of keeping track of jobs and stuff. I thought it was stupid. Lots of career mm. fairs. Lots. Okay. Oh, yeah. But I'm talking about tons of interviews. Couldn't land a single job. Yeah, and it's not like I didn't go there dressed up or dressed up there and practicing what I was supposed to say and answering the questions and stuff like that. No, they just want the same the same person who screwed them over. That's the kind of same type of person they so want. So then I said, all right, look, look, I said, look, look, baby, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have the Bible in between us. Spiritual now. We still talk about, we still, oh, this is a spiritual oh, subject. So, you know, it's spiritual. If you expect to be spiritual because you're a Christian, you're a Christian, you better listen to stuff. So... We had the Bible in between us. Uh, my King James authorized version that I got from my pastor. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. I put that in there. Uh, got it from him. Uh, we said it in between us. We both hold hands. And we said, God, the Bible says that if two or more come to you in prayer, then it shall be given you. You know. So we say that first. We do it the right way, the way the Bible tells us to do it. We did this for two years straight. Okay. We did it during dinner time. And we did it before bed, um, two years, and she still didn't get anything. No job for her. I mean, I wasn't even praying for myself. <laughs> I was praying for her. You know, no job for her. All right. Um, it's sad. You know. So then after that, you know, thinking it's spiritual, thinking that because yeah, I'm, you know, in, in that, and during those same two years. You know, I was asking, I was hearing people talking about, well, YouTube, Jesus revealed himself to me. So I asked. I cleaned my space. I made it uh, here in the front room, 1.30 in the morning. And I said, okay, Jesus, I'm ready for you to reveal yourself to me. She was asleep. So I'm like, I'm not new to paranormal activity. So just show up. Mm -hmm. I'm right here. Did that for two years. Nothing. Nothing. Not, not a single shit. So somebody's lying about Jesus revealing himself to them because... Just try Jesus. Then you see those. You see those comments too. Just try Jesus. Just try. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm That's what everybody says. Happen. That's oh, what they okay. always say. And just for the people who, you know, I want to show the people the Bible. So this is the King James Version that he got. I know it's going to be backwards. 
the King James authorized version. Well, it don't say authorized on the front. It says that on the side. Turn them to the side. Let them see the bindings. Okay. Where's the word at? Oh, there it is. Authorized, authorized King James, James version. version. So this is this is the Bible he got from his pastor. So right from his pastor. You can't get no better with getting a Bible than getting it from a pastor. You can't get no better than that. The okay. person who's connected with God. Yeah, got that personal relationship and everything. And then I found out, I found out through uh, a person that came there that it wasn't spiritual at all. He wasn't giving me no spiritual message from God at all. I found out that he went to Bible college. And he's only giving me stuff that, that he learned through Bible college. Not through God. Not through no Jesus. Not through the person I'm trying to fucking connect with through this guy. The pastor. I learned that. You know, it's your Bible college. And then I learned about, then I learned that you get taxes back on your, on donating to the church on tithes. Yeah. I'm sitting there like, why is the government involved? And then I learned about 501c3s, how the government themselves is keeping, is keeping, you know, the church is going up and up. And then I learned in the Bible, it says that how Satan is the God of this world. And then I take a look at the God of this world and Satan is the God of this world. And I take a look, you know, and it's the government. And so I'm like, well, damn. So if. So the churches is really just something, you know, the government's using. You know, and speaking of something alarming that I've been seeing lately, which I guess I'm going to have to just make a real short video of it. Uh, something alarming I've been seeing. I went to a place called Simba, African food. I saw Jesus stuff, like crosses and Jesus on a cross. I went to a Chinese place that was, had everything. Like a Chinese store, yeah. A Chinese store, and everything 50% off. I saw all these crosses with angels and stuff this is not a good thing this actually saddens me to my core because this is just about the same type of takeover as we've already seen in history with ancient Kemet okay we are losing culture we are losing people's history they are it's not good to take over people's whole cultures and things because when you take a trip if I want to take a trip to Egypt or I want to take a trip to Africa you know I want to take a trip to Hong Kong or um, or the Middle East or, or the uh, I don't want to see that stuff. Mexico. I want to see what they what they think. I want to see, you know, what they view life as, their culture. I want to learn something different. I want to eat the different food. I don't want everything to be Americanized. I don't want to take a trip just to be, just to to go to a place that's the same as here. Because we know the Roman, the Romans, you know, the Greeks, they have a senate. Okay, we have a senate, so we know that it's the Greeks that's in power. We know that it's the Romans that's in power. Yeah. Okay. So now. What the hell is Africa doing with a Senate? Why do they have that now? Why do they, why are they doing a the president? What is that? What the fuck is that? This is not a good thing. Okay, we are losing humanity here. The the the, the different. It, no, it's not about segregation. Least, yeah, it's about this is the culture. This is what we believe. This is why we believe it. You know, what do you think about that? Oh, you know, that's cool. You know, I, I like that. You know, that's so that resonates with me. I've been having these crazy dreams, and that actually resonates with me. Stuff like that. You can't connect spiritually. It's like they're taking the spirituality out of the different cultures of people. It's not good. You're going to end up like that movie. Yeah, what's that movie called that we watched? It was, um, I'm trying to think about it. We watched two movies. We watched Elysium. That was, that was an interesting movie with Elysium. Um, mm -hmm. Which I thought was cool. And then there was the other movie. I can't think about it. It's not Equalizer, but it's Equilibrium. Equal, Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Yeah, the movie Equilibrium. Yeah. You guys should definitely watch that because that it shows ties you, directly yeah. with what he's saying. Yeah. Um, we watched it, and um, it was, I got to say, yeah. it was a direct tie to what it seems like they're trying to do. Yes. So definitely check out that movie uh it was equilibrium. equilibrium. Definitely check check that out because and watch the whole thing, and you will you will get it and understand a lot about it and yeah. stuff. This is a spiritual movie for people looking for a movie. It's something to watch because it's it's you know we we watch a lot of movies that we try to what we find stuff in and a lot of movies that don't even have anything to do with spiritual stuff we find stuff in about spiritual stuff. Yeah. You know, if you're a waking person, you'll you'll find that. But one of the things I just wanted to do with this video was talk about like the the truth. And I know we start off talking about kids and stuff like that with the girls thinking that ha with the virgin birth and having kids makes you, you know, more anointed and stuff. It doesn't make you more anointed or holier than thou or anything. It doesn't do that because we see how you know people are treating their kids. Kids are, for example, I'll give you a very example that a lot of people know now. Um, 
uh, that happened just a few days ago where um, the boy in Florida, the shooting in Florida where all those kids were killed by that one, you know, teenager and stuff like that. He, he killed 17 people, you know, and there is another thing to tell you that the world is not safe, which is if you guys have ever heard about the school shooting with uh, in Newtown, Connecticut, it happened back some years back. But that was where a bunch of kids were killed. And you know what's so alarming with people having kids is that I was on Facebook and I found out that the shooting in Florida, that was the 18th school shooting this year. I did not know that. And people were having babies. And their kids are growing up and these school shootings are happening. And there's been 18 so far. And nobody's doing anything to make sure that these shootings don't happen. These kids don't die. See, that's not very cool to put on Facebook and on YouTube when people's talking about this stuff and you're sitting there telling them fate saves. Excuse you? All these, these parents losing their children and you want to talk about fate saves? All these children all these children dying and shit in these school shootings? And the 18th this year and one year? Well, that's kind of 18? fucked up. 18? Well, that's kind of fucked up for you to go ahead and tell that parent that, well, and they, they try to talk to God. Well, maybe it wasn't your time. Well, did you have faith? Are you trying to get decked in the mouth? These people had lost their damn children. And there's people losing their kids to a lot of other stuff. You know, diseases. People, there was this lady who she had a baby and stuff or whatever. And she wanted to have a baby. And you know what happened? She uh, basically found out, the one she was pregnant, she found out the baby may have like a little... A little defect, but it, uh, she was told by the doctors it was going to be something that was going to be able to be cured, you know, when the baby came out and was born. But it turns out that they didn't tell, what they didn't tell her was that the, the defect that the child had, it was a lot more than what she thought it was. You know, it was really something that was, um, that was wasn't still with the child. it was something terminal that the baby's going to have forever. And the doctors did not tell her. The truth, because the lady said, if I would have known that my child would not be able to be cured from it or whatever, you know, for something that seems small, but it was really big, a lot bigger than what they got, said it was like a disease or something, that they said, oh, well, we can cure this up. They made it look like something small, but it was really a terminal disease. And so the lady said, you know, she's suing the, the hospital where the doctors are because they didn't tell her the truth about it. They really didn't. They didn't really care. You know, and the thing probably is, that she would have probably was a Christian hospital that didn't want her to get an abortion. And yeah, they they said the um that she said that she would have got an abortion if she would have known, you know, that it was something okay. that's going to impact the life of her child, and that's somebody who cared about their child. Yeah. But here you got the people at these hospitals not caring about kids. I told, I said my my experience, but. These other people's experience, you know, and I'll tell you this, the craziest thing. When you are um, at a hospital and they find out you're pregnant, you know what they say? They'll say, oh, congratulations, you're having a baby. But then in the same breath, because um, I've been pregnant before, in the same breath, they'll say, um, well, I'm glad that I'm glad my kid's 18 and they moving out. And oh, my God. And it was. Yeah, we heard that. Yeah. She's talking to me. Yeah, when when uh, first time I was pregnant, yeah. yeah. So and and you know the last time that I was pregnant, where the uh, with the um, the abortion happened, where um, it was a self abortion, my body cannot handle it, uh, the pregnancy. But with that, when I found out I was pregnant, guess yeah. what? The lady came into the room. She found out I was pregnant. She's like, "Oh, this is the happiest room I've ever been in," and we were just sitting there like, "How." It took you, you see six that? hours. She's sitting her old blood. More and more and more of her old blood. Getting colder and colder while you was drawing blood from her until her body refused to give you any more fucking blood. Yeah. How was this the happiest damn room in the fucking building? Yeah, and so, I mean, this, this, is, some, this is some deep shit. You know, people really the don't... What's wrong with you? People really do not think about this stuff. The they Christian really hospital. don't. Yeah, and it's this Christian, and, and they in these churches they profess that God's gonna save you, and God can do anything, and He's gonna, you got it, the Bible's gonna now, do this and that. Now, I'll tell you what, out of all those six hours that she was there, that she was still sitting there, and the extra two hours that it took for her for her to finally leave the, leave the hospital, nobody prayed. Nobody came to her pray. Nobody came and asked her if she wanted a priest. They don't believe in that stuff themselves.
And every hospital is a Christian hospital. <coughs> if they did, then they would have just brought a Bible in there and see if Jesus and God was going to heal you instead of uh, actually you know, instead of actually getting a doctor that, that it took years of study for medicine. And, yeah, you don't and, need no you know, degree when, when it comes to God. They got a Bible. You don't need that. Yeah. You just need Jesus. Yeah, just pray. You know, heal you right up. Bow. But we know they don't believe in that because it's Cause, all just a business. It, it, it's yeah. all just a damn business. Because they'd be sure in the hell to bring you a motherfucking bill. They'll bring you that bill right quick. Oh, it costs this much money. And churches will do that too. Hey, if yeah. you don't, if you don't tie it, they gonna like this is that lady that bill. They hurt, she ain't tired. They, yeah, they hunt her down, and they try to take. I try, try to take her to court too. Black lady, try to take this black lady to court because she was going to church and not tithing. Yep. Real yeah, shit. it's all it's all just a damn business. I mean, really, but real shit. But then you look in the Bible, you find out that tithing was a whole thing about a war. Was was given what you it was given the spoil some of the spoils of war for winning the war. That's all it was. Yeah, for one guy, and there was nothing else about <laughs> tithing. There's so much stuff in the Bible, it's but I really want the thing we you start off with with kids like. This this is not the kind of place to be having kids or trying to make it like you got this virgin birth going on to have kids because kids are dying in these school shootings. Like I said, there's been 18 this year, and this is only February. I'm tired of seeing pregnant women out there on the <clears> motherfucking <throat> roads with the fucking sign saying, help have three kids pregnant with another one. I'm tired of seeing that shit. Yeah, I'm, we're tired of I mean, come on. If you... And, oh... Do you remember you went to that church because he went to the church to get some food or whatever? And what what did you see when you went to go get the food? Oh, I saw a lady with three kids that was pregnant with another one. Did you see another one? Yeah, there was like three of them. There was three women that were pregnant. Yeah, and one, it, one was Mexican. Oh, <clears throat> Latino, so one was Mexican though. And I think they go by something different. They go by um, chance. <clears throat> they, just, they just go by life off of chance. They don't really plan their life on them. At least that's what one of the another Mexican girl said. I don't know if it's for all of them, but True. that's what she said. Yeah, but the, but the most of them was white. Oh no, 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 I'm, no, I'm no. sorry. No, two, two, black two of them was white. Three of them was black chicks that had babies. Yeah, they had babies. And what were the kids saying at the food pantry? They were saying they was hungry. I'm cold. I'm hungry. I'm cold. Cause I mean, the food pantry is open at nine a.m. through like eleven. Eleven. Eleven in the morning. Um, yeah. And you have to, and it usually, usually times it takes a whole two hours. It does, because everybody's got to sign in, and then they have to go get <clears> stuff <throat> ready, and that takes another hour till about ten. And finally, from ten o'clock to eleven o'clock is when they're actually giving you the food and going to the car and things like that. All the while, the kids is freezing, they're cold. You know, you're thinking, why don't they just sit in the car? Because guess what, y'all? Man, y'all know. A car. lot of people don't got a car. They are walking pregnant. They're walking with their kids. And I want to say that this they're, isn't. They're, they got a shopping cart <clears> that you. Um, Take from the store. Yeah, one of those shopping carts you, you you roll out like a luggage. Yeah, and this is something where, you know, this is serious stuff. By the time women are having babies and they 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 had a food pantry and they know that they can't support themselves and they ain't got nothing to to support the kids and they're having them. Like we said, animals. By the time the animals are smarter than you <laughs> to have kids, that's a problem. You know that that's a big big issue. Now there is something that's an issue with people having. Uh, kids and that's something we see when we go to the store um so we've noticed that when we go to the store because people are having so many kids that drives up the cost of stuff Way that high. a few years ago would have been cheaper and now it's like you know something that was like two dollars not five bucks because people are having these Oranges. kids yeah eggs that we used to mm -hmm. buy okay mm -hmm. eggs that we used to buy before donald trump was elected was like 88 cents. Now, it's like two bucks. Yeah, for stuff. Yeah, and the now thing... I'm talking about and, all these. And, it's, <laughs> and not to mention, Damn. if you go to like a Snooks or a Shop and Save or um, a Deerberg's or whatever, and you go, these are grocery stores, by the way, not to mention, you can see that, but yeah, people having kids, you know, that drives up the cost, not just food, but cost of gas, the cost of your bills and stuff. We have heard like, what's our bills doing All the resources higher? that they need. Okay. <clears throat> I know the, all the resources that's being used because, you know, of course gas. You know, the bus has got to make more trips. I mean, but the bus, I mean, the buses don't really have to make that many more trips. I mean, they're basically going to about four houses. They're picking up 20 kids. Oh, you so, mean for school buses? For school? Yeah, for school buses. They're basically going to four houses. You're like, wow, that don't make any sense. Yeah, I do. They go to one house and pick up five children. 
five chip five five kids to every one mom. They go to another house, pick up five more kids, go to a little more house, that's fifteen kids, go to another house, and that's twenty kids. The bus is pretty <clears> much, you know, might be full. So that's one classroom right there, right there already. So, you know, it only makes about four trips, but then again, you know, it may be spread all over the fucking place. Yeah, and I so. and we we see that too with it. Now we went to this house and this open house or whatever. We went to an open house and um, we were looking at a house because we were looking around for houses and stuff. We're still looking around for a house that we want to get. But um, so we're looking around for a house, and here's the thing that we know the kids are definitely something because we went to one open house. So his wife and his in our house, and these people had this, you know, this couple, this white couple had. What the hell? They had seven kids. Mm -hmm. They had seven kids, and they have to sell their house. Yeah. And I was like, "Where are all these kids?" And they what said, the they, they, "They said as is too. That house, grungy carpet, cobwebs all over the place. Yeah, handprints everywhere. And I'm talking about handprints, dirt, grimy kid hands, and I, the blinds all fucked up." And they had all these crayons <laughs> just written. House as is. You do the work. You can have this house. And we're going to charge you a bunch of money. And they had the oldest ass microwave I ever saw in my life. That was attached to the house somehow. I think, yeah. And I think... Um, we, it was a big house. house. And it seemed like it was, you know, a house that would give you those um, those nostalgic vibes. Like when you go to your grandma's house. And she's yeah. in this old house. With the wooden fucking... The wooden walls and shit. Well, we've, and, we've and seen then, a lot of houses. Though. And the wallpaper at the top, you know, it's just, it was like one of those. It seemed, you, you got that homely feel to it, but it's just like, this house is kind of fucked up. Yeah, we've seen, we've seen, some, we've seen several houses like that where kids have been like, we could tell people had kids. Because we could tell the blinds, the handprints, the, the broken stuff. Like, we could yeah. literally see it, and we're like. But as you can see here, you know, all the stuff that we're talking about, it's not spiritual, is it? It's not spiritual, but not spiritual. but think about it. That's it not what it affects being. you. Like having children, if, if, it's yeah. not spiritual. It affects you. It affects you on that that day to day. Even people like us who don't have kids, it affects us negatively because we go to the store. We have a plan for how much stuff it's going to cost, but then we go to the store. We want some oranges, and then the oranges are five bucks, and we're like, wait a minute, I thought it was like. It used to be two, two bucks. bucks. What the, the bananas, hell? I'm, I'm, I promise you, the bananas used to be 35 cents. Yeah, they did. I'm telling you, the bananas are like a dollar twenty-five now. That's a big ass jump. Yeah, and it's just like people. Oh my God. And okay, we, I will tell you something. We did do. We worked at this baby store. We it was called Bye Bye Baby. We worked at this baby store. Oh yeah, together. Yeah, we worked there together and stuff. And I will tell you, there were so many women. Who came in to do baby registries where basically they want to put all this stuff on this list that they want people to get them for their baby shower. And there's so much stuff. Now And we're was... talking we're talking about women who I mean, mm -hmm. if you were a guy and you work at a baby store, mm -hmm. be prepared because like your your stuff down there is always gonna be up. I don't know what it is about a bunch of women walking around pregnant, but for some reason you're growing your your penis down there is always hard all day long. I don't know fucking what it is, but it just is. So tell me <clears> about <throat> what what was the experience like? So I would deal with the woman and I see them being pregnant and stuff, or whatever. And the like the cost of stuff in that baby store. We know that babies are a business that these places, marketplaces are getting these these stores. We know it because. That bye bye baby store and in baby stores everywhere we know it's bigger than marriage. We know it is because the cost of that stuff in that store. By the time you walk out that store, you could have spent two, three, four, five thousand dollars in that store for honest. baby stuff. I, no, this is the funny thing. You had women cashiers, then you had me, male cashier. <laughs> when the guys come in, they don't go to the women cashier. They go to me, the male cashier. And they are so, um, they are so defeated. Mm -hmm. So defeated. This dude, I mean, he spent so much money. And he's like, and this is just clothes for my pregnant wife. I spent $5,000 already. And I have to buy her more clothes as well as the baby's more clothes. Now I have to buy more stuff and crib for the new baby. 
She told me that she was on birth control now. This is the seventh time she told me this. <laughs> and they are so defeated. Yeah, and there's... Uh, white dudes, black dudes. The Asian dudes, seem, do. the Asian dudes seem kinda... They seem like they ain't really worried about it. But the black dudes and the white dudes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... Now, the funny thing we did see, when we were, you, you saw at the store was those kids, the lady with the kids. Do you remember what happened? You saw the lady with the kids and she had a baby. Oh, and she had the, the kids. Oh, so she, this lady had, as working about a baby, right? And this lady had a kid in her hands. A baby. A baby in her hands, okay. And then she had a baby boy here and a baby boy here. So I'm guessing she's trying to get a girl, but she can't. What, are they kids? Those are toddlers. toddlers. And so they talked to each other. And they said, let's see if mommy can catch us. It's like, yeah. And, and they both said, ready, go. Boom. And they take off like that. And she's she's yelling, Johnny, Bobby, you guys can't leave me here with this baby. Oh, Does it sound like, like you know, motherhood's great? That didn't sound spiritual to me. That sounds like real shit. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> like something. Can you um, hear something? Can you imagine how much money it is when you gotta feed? People don't realize when you have a baby, that's another mouth to feed. That's another person you gotta provide for. Well, the dad's not with them. Uh, also, I didn't see, I hardly seen, you know, the dads that was there, you know, they was paying for a lot of things. But most of the times, it was just girls there, and the dad wasn't around, or dad was in jail, or some bullshit. Yeah, and black so, and white, so yeah. You know, so they was, you know, they are counting on his career. They're counting on the alimony to pay for it. They're counting on um, the, the fucking... The, the different guys, you know, they have three babies with three different dudes, and they all got to dip in the child support money with the three different hierarchy jobs. One person making minimum wage, one person that's, best, you know, uh, middle class, and a person that's higher class, you know, all those different type of money's coming in, you know, but, and that's what they're hoping to pay for everything. While she sits back and, you know, doesn't really work, or she works a little bit while she puts the baby off on whatever parents that she has or other siblings of herself that she has can put the baby on. And that's really just how they do things. I would tell somebody who's who's watching, if you're like a teenager or something and you're you're messing around with people, like your girl or guy and look, you you're having sex, protect yourself. Definitely do that. Get on birth control or whatever. Um, and when I say, like, guys, for, for the girl, if you, you have a teenage girlfriend, you're a teenager and stuff, and y'all, you know, having sex, it's important to protect yourself. Even if you're adults in your 20s or 30s or 40s, whatever, protect yourself. Well, what's that mean? I'm going to tell you what that means. Protect yourself means make sure that the girl is using the birth control, that you can see her insert into herself. Yeah. Or that you can see that she's wearing a patch. Or that you can see that she shoots up this little thing called VCF with some liquid and she puts it in there. Or that you put it in your first set yourself that's VCF. Now, still pull out. When you use VCF, still pull out. You kind of. You can't use it with a condom. Yeah. No. Because it, I think it like it deteriorates the condom or something. But still she's pull allergic out. to it, yeah, put, still pull out with that shit. Now, with the pull out thing, be careful with the whole pull out game and stuff because a lot of guys will say their pull out game is really strong. strong and everything. Don't do that by itself. Make sure she's using a sponge, something you can see her insert. Okay. Yeah. I don't care if she says she's on birth control. I don't care. You, you have to, if you can't see, I mean, some girls take the pill only when they have sex, and that's how they think they got to take the pill. Well, really, it's a daily. If they're not going to show you what dare they're on, and you don't see that the pills are matching up to that date, let's say it's the 29th, and you don't see each pill gone until the 29th. But then again, even that's not foolproof. She could have just dumped all those motherfucking pills out and only had that one for the 29th just in case you are ass asked. So with the condom, when you ejaculate into the condom, good. But before you do that, before you feel ejaculation coming on, feel down there. Feel, Guys, yeah. feel, feel the condoms on. Okay, and then someone, okay, go ahead and ejaculate. Now, you take your condom, you go to the bathroom, Turn on the water, fill it up like a water balloon, and dump out the sperm. Now you can throw it away. Because now when she says, oh, I gotta go take a shower, or oh, I gotta go to the bathroom, now when she goes in there and she goes and grabs a condom out and tries to take a little turkey baster or a little syringe and shoot it up in herself to get pregnant by you, 
And there's a girl. There's a girl that did that. Isn't isn't that a girl? It's that a did lot. That? It's a lot of girls. This happened to a lot of basketball players. First of all, this is real shit. So yeah, but it's not spiritual. Yeah, but what did the guys? What did shit. the guys? What did the guys do? Um, what, what did the what did that one guy do or whatever when he was exposing his oh, uh, sperm? Okay, the condom. His sperm. The one did. Okay, so a guy ejaculated. He had his sperm in a condom. He got rid of this. He neutralized the sperm by putting a uh, hot sauce in it. Okay, and then then he tied it. He tied it to make sure the sperm didn't come out, and he threw it away. Okay, so. The girl says, I gotta go to the bathroom. I gotta take a shower. He said, okay. Next thing you know, he hears, <laughs> and you know what happened? She burnt her cooch. That hot sauce was in that cooch just burning her up. You know why? And what, what because happened? Because she ended up taking the stuff and putting it in her damn vagina. So she wasn't even supposed to do. So then she's like, oh, I'm gonna get this nigga. I'm gonna get this dude. I'm gonna get him. Let's go to court. I'm taking you to court. You did this to me. You hurt me. So then, there he goes. Lie detector showed that he was telling the truth. He didn't hurt her at all. You know, he just had sex with her. He didn't hurt her. You know, but here she is hurt with a burnt ass cooch. So here they are sitting here like, um, sir, did you do this on purpose? He said, uh, no. Uh, I protected myself and I neutralized my sperm by putting uh, hot sauce, you know, habanero sauce, hot sauce in there. Uh, that's how I neutralize the sperm. And then they look at her with her burnt cooch vagina and they say, <laughs> Well, um, lady, it is woman or, you know, girl. It is, he he can neutralize the sperm and he can get rid of his own bodily fluids any way that he sees fit. She didn't get no money. She tried to do some slick shit. She tried to do some evil ass shit, but it didn't work. And she got a burnt cooch from it too. That karma came so quick. But it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, people... Not spiritual. It's not... Real no, shit. No, it's, it's real. You know, when when people try to hold the, the whole thing up with the kid being... These days, like, you know, they try to hold having a baby up as being something that's spiritual. And it's not, really, because it's gonna... It's not. If it was... If it was... I'll tell you. If it was spiritual, where people, you know, with kids, people would... They would look at having a baby as being a significant event. They would have, you know, take the precautions and they make sure the baby's provided for and they love the child and the couple love each other and, and they their, set aside their things. Their consciousness and, and they, their, their awareness would be expanded out of having a baby. Yeah, and they, they know and they would they would really be there present but they wouldn't have a baby in an environment where they know the baby has a low survival rate, where the baby's going to die. They wouldn't do that. They would be responsible like the animals. The animals are more spiritual with their kids than, than people. Or, that, or, you know, they wouldn't have a baby if they say, well, I'm on food stamps and I don't get a lot of money. And I have to go three days without eating. And I have to ask my other parents for food stamps too. And I have to ask other people for money. But I'm going to go ahead and have a baby because I have blind faith. Blind faith. And the people who have blind faith, now all of a sudden they start hearing something else. God told me I needed to kill my baby so they can go to heaven. Oh, now you going to kill the girl and go to heaven. Where they going to feel all this damn pain and shit? Well, yeah, but gonna then you're going to go shit. to jail too with that. Now you're you definitely kill. going, well, yeah, it's definitely something with that. But it's just like, people don't think. Now, there is one thing I am going to say to before we end the video, which is for guys, it's important that you know that you to know if your girlfriend wants a baby and you, you, you know, one way to tell that she wants a baby, which is a puppy. Oh, yeah. What's a puppy? If she gets a puppy and she says, I want a puppy, she's testing to see how you would be with the baby. Well, she's always handing the puppy, the puppy to you, seeing how you treat the puppy. That means she's about to have a baby on you. So watch out. Now. The big one, this is a huge, this is this is kind of huge. If you notice that your your girl is seeing a bunch, because going on Facebook and seeing all these other chicks who is her friends, who's pregnant, who has taken a pregnancy test, and now all of a sudden your girl comes up with a pregnancy test, that's not hers. That pregnancy saying that it's positive, that pregnancy test saying that it's positive, 
is her friends. Do not ejaculate inside of her. She is not pregnant. Yeah, you need to, to confirm a woman's pregnancy. And I, how I confirmed my pregnancy was I went to a hospital and uh, stuff. Because, like, the pregnancy tests, they're, they're not always a sure bet. They can be faulty or something. So go to a hospital. And, you know, if you're a guy or a girl or whatever, you know, if you if even if y'all in a good terms relationship and y'all want to have a baby, you know, and y'all really want to, you know, the girl's pregnant or whatever, or lady's pregnant, go to a hospital. Confirm that you're pregnant. Like I said, there could be a disorder that you could have or whatever. You have to be careful. Some people cannot have kids. That's that's important. They they may not know that they can't have kids. But go to the hospital and confirm that you're pregnant, you know, so that you know, you know, so that it's confirmed. You don't have to guess or wonder or anything like that about being pregnant. You have it square out. Now, if you have the thing where the girl it might take doesn't. Life. You could get lucky and find out it's a tumor and say, oh, shit. Yeah, and the girl. Um, yeah, and the girl finds out. I would say with the girl, it's important to find out if you're, you know, <laughs> the whole pregnancy thing, because then your your life you have to adapt it to the pregnancy and stuff. You you have to know that, so you don't stress yourself out or whatever, and you know what you have to do. But you guys have to realize when you're pregnant, realize that it's going to change both of your lives, and it might be going down a road that maybe you're not prepared for, or you don't know what to do. With that or whatever, just know if you are pregnant, you know, and you catch it early enough, like within um, like the five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, whatever. I mean, if you go to Planned Parenthood, just know that you can get an abortion if that's not something you guys decide you want to do. You know, you can get an abortion. Abortion is not evil. Don't let the church make you think that it is evil or it's bad. They're not going to be there to pay your bills. They're not going to be there <clears throat> to pay for them $45 diapers. They're not going to be there. You better, you better listen to me. They're and they're not going to be there. And no, Jesus gonna, is going to show up. He's not going to send no cherubims. He's not going to send no seraphims. seraphims. He's not going to send that stuff. And, you know, they're they're, they're not going to be there. But you know what they will do? After you have the baby, after you believe and have the baby and everything, and you're Christian and stuff, they will say this. They will call you a bad parent. You're a bad parent. And you shouldn't have that baby. And this, 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 and that, 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 and you should have made sure you had a job, and you should have made sure you had a house, and you should have made sure you had... They will tell you that. And they wonder why people up here are shooting people in the church. Oh, yeah. And they wonder why... Yeah, they wonder why your ass don't got shot. Yeah. But this is some serious stuff, you know. Christianity does affect things. It affects people's sex life, whether they get married. You know, it affects having kids. It affects that, and it's something that, you know... It is not spiritual to have a kid. These days, it's not. It just seems like on the magazines that I see, girl, they'll talk about celebrities, they're pregnant, and, oh, she's having her this baby, and talking about this and that. But I thought it was so funny how one of the celebrities, uh, she got, I think it was Khloe Kardashian or whatever. I don't know what her last name is. Um, but she she's pregnant by this, this black dude, and... Um, he he's supposed to be some bad boy or something, and like he's up here still messing with this other baby mama he got, and they're talking about clothes. Supposedly she's um only living on a box of chicken or some a bucket of chicken or something. And I'm just like, can you imagine these people are living their lives by these magazines and these reality shows? And don't y'all know that reality shit's fake? Like it's not really real. Reality is your bills you gotta pay. You know what I'm saying? You gotta go to work. You know what I'm saying? You got to go to work. Go, you got to get up and you got to go outside and get rained on. You know what I'm saying? Yo, go outside. Your car that broke down. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? You, this is real life, you know? And you notice. Ain't no use in the law of attraction to bring you abundance for that one. <laughs> you know, I mean, let's, let's get serious about it. I mean. Plenty of people want to use law of attraction when the police is behind them. I want to attract that this police go away. Law of attraction activate. Yeah, Ree you know. Ree -ree 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 -ree. And what does Jesus say when you get pulled over anyway? You, you ever seen him? That you ever seen Jesus show up in court? That motherfucker ain't you looking in the rearview mirror, please. Jesus back there? Damn. <laughs> so, let's just, let's be honest about this. This motherfucker thing. ain't showing up on a slave boat. This motherfucker ain't showing up in the Syria. He ain't showing up anywhere. Damn. He ain't showing up in before these school shootings to stop these people from killing these people. Reveal, yeah. So, you know, you know what? When people come to me and they be like, 
I don't have to give you this pamphlet. I'd be like, no, nah, I like I like to save my blessing. I would like to save the touching so that God can go and touch somebody who's about to starve to death who need food. I'd rather save the him touching me to touch somebody out there, a uh, 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 a sleeping truck driver who's about to crash to kill a whole bunch of children mm -hmm. or kill a whole bunch of children on the school bus or kill a whole bunch of people on the road who about to crash. I'm gonna save him from touching me to to make me run around and dance around like a damn chicken and yell a whole <laughs> bunch of crazy shit. I'd rather save that so he can actually get out there and touch these children in these schools and touch somebody who's 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 lost a mama to cancer, breast cancer, and now the only, only people they got is their father and their father is a, is a, a, a spiritual awoken person and now the whole thing done to Denied them because they're Jehovah Witnesses, and now their children only has their father to live. I, I'm gonna I'm a save my being touched in church so that the, the guy can go ahead and touch that dude for, from getting to a wreck, mm -hmm. so that he can go ahead and take care of his kids since his whole family are well, Jehovah Witnesses and denied him. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what it's about, you know. But we talking about some real stuff. See, on on our channels, we be getting real about stuff. We we don't be we we don't look at it. Our, this experience in this matrix we don't look at it like it's not real and like you know like all of a sudden all our problems are going to go away you know Hell no because no, in christianity jesus ain't show up when you saying jesus ain't knock on the door ain't come to dinner 14 years i've been wanting to have me 14 years i was in the church praying for the same motherfucking thing so you got to have perseverance you got to have faith i did you know i you did everything i did everything they told me to do even though shit failed but you know <clears throat> And I still, till this day, even even two years after me getting out of the church, I still don't have a good relationship with my dad. When I say good relationship, I mean I took the effort. I went to say, Dad, uh, the stuff I did when I was a kid, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if I say anything bad to you, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. And trying to mend that stuff, okay? Even the stuff that the abusers made me say to him that I didn't want to say for myself, I tried to mend that stuff. I did everything in my fucking power to have... My fucking uh, a good relationship with my dad. Well, he was never sincere enough in church. Bullshit. I was in church sitting there crying my fucking eyes out, getting moved by the music when these people <laughs> called the Crusaders came. And I was really, I was really feeling it, really thinking that it was going to work, and it still didn't fucking and work. And the pastor so said, what and the pastor say. said that it was going to happen because all you gotta do is pray about it. And oh, by the way, not to mention, I had about five people that supposedly had the Holy Ghost Spirit moving through them, God moving them <laughs> and possessing them and coming out and bringing the power on oh, me and on my God. situation to talking in the Holy Ghost Spirit to make me have a connection with my dad. And if that, if there are five people, okay, wow. appear to have a Holy Ghost talking in tongues and shit, putting the power, laying hands on you, and you still don't have a connection with your dad, you know that shit's fake as fuck. And it's time to leave and do something for real. So, yeah, we, we kind of got turned up about a lot of things. I get turned up and because we got, we got turned up about a lot of things. But, you know, we're we're actually here to help people. Oh, uh, well, let me get an iPhone right quick. Beep, 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 beep. Let me call Michelle. Damn, my iPhone don't work. Well, I'm not supposed to complain about that. I'm supposed to just have some blind faith and keep on walking around talking on it like I'm a fucking crazy person. If I, if I had a phone and I walked around on it all day, talked on it all the time, and there's nobody on the fucking other line, <laughs> they put me in a damn crazy house. So if I'm reading the Bible and I'm doing all the shit the church says that they're that it says to do, and you know, all these damn promises that they said to get me in, and these there's different churches that I went through through me moving and shit, you know, around Missouri, uh, if it don't work, I'm not supposed to complain about that. If it don't work, I'm not supposed to, you know, if I sat there and kept being on my knees, repenting and, and talking to God and all the time, and he ain't listening, he ain't showing up, but he's omnipresent, and he's watching me pray about a situation, and he knows I'm in the right, and he's omnipresent, and he knows that I'm doing stuff, and he is seeing me pray, and he is seeing the situation, and he is seeing somebody getting right, and he is seeing the, the things, that, the bad shit that's going on, watching me pray, watching others pray, watching the supposed Holy Ghost move through these people. Yeah, and watching these kids get shot up in these, these school shootings knowing this guy's gonna go in there take a gun in there seeing these kids being in fear probably, probably, some of these kids probably praying and hoping and everything and seeing these kids get killed yeah omnipresent remember so but i mean i finally figured it out isaiah 45 verse 7 king james version king james authorized version on the very fact where my bible oh here it is let, let's read it from the Bible. Let, let's do a little Bible study. I got this shit on quick tab. <laughs> yeah, Isaiah 45, 7. Here it is. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Well, damn. Now I know why. You enjoying this shit. You and Satan are accomplices, ain't y'all? Which would be the government. Which would be one, they're one and the same. That's what it is. 
They do bad shit. God tells people, hey, you want that country? Just go over there and kill them and take it. The Bible tells you the same thing. Got the army people going over there doing it. Okay. Because it, you know why? Because it don't make sense, does it? It don't make sense for, for if Satan is the God of this world and you got the government seeing, seeing that they're the God of this world and they're everywhere taking gold for all these fucking people. It don't make sense for them to be giving 501c3s to the churches, does it? So that they can keep going up and up? doesn't make sense that a motherfucker can sit here and make money off of something that they supposedly didn't write. Copyright it. You can't plagiarize it. Plagiarism? How is it plagiarism? It's just God's word. No one can plagiarize God's word. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, we do. Having a baby ain't spiritual. No, I, having a baby, I was a baby. is not spiritual. I grew up. I grew up in a bunch of bullshit. You know? But as you can see, okay. I, I, I want to back up just a little bit. Having a baby isn't spiritual. I don't mean that the baby that's going to come out won't be. That baby may be spiritual. They may remember a past life. They may have paranormal experiences going on. And you might have to deal with that shit. Prepare yourself. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. Because if you read from this Bible, like like some movie, like you're trying to exercise some demon, be prepared for shit to get a whole lot worse. That's what happened to me. And when I say be prepared for it to get shit to get a whole lot worse, because there's not good stuff that's in here. There's not they good will stuff. laugh at you. There's not good stuff that's in here, so yeah. you can see the Bible. Yeah, they will. They will laugh at you, and shit will get worse. You need to do real shit, real actual stuff that other people, in, back in the ancient history, has used. And, and I mean, come on, they used the stuff before this Bible came into existence. So you know that's 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 what you got to do. So you do that, okay? Mm -hmm. So yeah, having a child does is not spiritual. It does not make you more spiritual or whatever. Um, being a Christian does not make you spiritual. Of course, you don't believe in meditation anyway if you're a Christian. You know, and if you're a Christian, just remember, you have to follow, let's see. So the Pharisees followed, what is it, like six or seven hundred laws, or something like that. So the Pharisees mm -hmm. followed that. And, you know, what what it said, nobody's, they didn't follow the word better than the Pharisees. I mean, the Pharisees was very thorough with it. But you also remember, if you're a Christian, God's the same God. The God of the Bible is the same God he was back then. So that means you got to follow the stuff in the Old Testament and you got to follow in the New Testament. So the stuff that Pharisees was following with the Old Testament stuff, you got to follow all that. And you got to follow this new stuff that was added with the, you know, with the new commandments. So you got to follow all that. No, you got to remember that now. Let's no, remember, if you follow Jesus, what do you say? He says that if you want to go to heaven, okay, first thing you got to do, you must hate your brother. Okay. But, he says, those of you who hate your brethren are murderers. Okay? And then he says, all murderers will go and burn in hell. So if you follow Jesus, you're going to burn in hell. And remember, here's something for also for people who are Christian to remember. There's a part in the Bible where we get Jesus and he says, People will come to me, people come to me in heaven and they'll say, they say, Lord, I did this for you, I did that for you, and everything like that. And Jesus said, what he will say to you is that he will say, depart from me, for I did not know you. Is that fucked up? So because all, that he, shit, you, all that stuff you're putting on Facebook and, and all those comments you're putting on YouTube. Telling people to go to hell yeah. and all this stuff and how you live in holding it down and stuff. Jesus said he he didn't know you. <laughs> so he said, you ain't going, you ain't getting there. You ain't getting there. You know why you know why I ain't getting there? Because... Because he ain't the way to everlasting life. God told you. He told you in the very beginning. What is? The tree of life is the only way to everlasting life. And how life. do we know it's the tree of life? Hmm? Do you know how we know it's the tree of life? Because in the in the Garden of Eden, we noticed what happened with Adam and Eve where when, before God kicked them out, he guarded the tree of life with uh, cherubims and seraphims and a flaming sword and stuff like that to prevent anything from getting so Adam and Eve can get it. Mm hmm So that's the way to get there. And where was that at? That was on Earth. He didn't put Adam and Eve in heaven. heaven? Hell no. no. The okay. knowledge, the tree, it was the knowledge of good and evil. Knowledge of it. From. It already existed. It's too damn late. It, yeah. Evil already existed. All right? Yeah, we see the, We see this. The, it was just, we see, you know, Satan or the devil or and whatever who you say. Evil? I just told you who. God did, yeah. Because we... But you know they wanted one in the same because, like you said, the, the devil walks in or Satan walks in on um, God and just does. He's whatever. asking where you come from. Oh, from walking in and out of the earth and up and down through it. 
wait a minute, I thought he was a snake and I thought you would put him and the angels in everlasting chains. So how the fuck y'all talking about, well, you're possessed by a demon. You're possessed by Satan. How if he's supposed to be everlasting chains? Have you seen, and let me ask you, have you seen a demon? You guys are talking about demons. You ain't, you, how do you know what a demon looks like? Have you seen it? For real. Have, have you seen, uh, you know, to tell you the truth, tell you what. I've had dreams. I've had, I think, I've had two dreams of Jesus. But, unfortunately, he was exactly like what was put into my consciousness. He looked exactly like what they show on TV. That's it. Yeah. I mean, or what they show in him as being white in pictures. Yeah. I had a dream about God, too. One time, I had a dream about him. It was when I was a lot younger. I saw his foot, and it was white. You know, just uh, last year, uh, I had a dream about him. He was space, like outer yeah, space. Yeah, this is a different and, and, interpretation. Yeah, this is like a this different. Is when I, so now when I got out of that Christianity stuff, now I saw him again. Okay, but this time is when I saw God. He was humongous, and he wore a blue suit, blue tie, blue undershirt, his hands. He had all these sparkles and stars and, and rainbows traveling from the back of him as he walked into a classroom. I was in a classroom. Yeah, this is the I real died. Yeah. I died in a dream. And then I got picked up by these angels made out of stone. <laughs> okay? It was made out of stone. Like, 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 like marble statues or something. And they picked me up and they took me to his classroom. Yeah, And, and there's other people here. So and this is the and this is when he's talking about the guy that he saw that looked like space and had the blue suit. This is the one that, this is the one that actually is. Yeah, this is the, this real, is the one. real one. This is not the Christian one. And so the Earth and all the <clears> planets <throat> and like the nebulas and all the stars make up his skin. Yeah, because okay? we're like, basically you in can God, see actually. inside of it. Like you can see inside. It's like transparent. It's like if I was to look at if I was to look look at space, just take my skin and cover it with everything. That looks like space, but you, it's deep. Like you can see in it. Yeah. Okay. That's and what, that's what he. That's what God looks yeah. like. You and here's something I would say. You just reminded me of a lot of times people will say, reference the story about the child who saw, um, who saw God supposedly when it was a little boy, it was a little white boy that saw God or whatever. And the thing was about that video or whatever was that the little boy saw God, and I think that he didn't really tell the truth about what he saw because oh, yeah, his mother he yeah. kept looking like this and he kept looking like yeah, that yeah he was because, scared to tell what he yeah. saw because the child's not going to lie Yeah, but he's he's worried because you know I, I don't know if they told the child that the mom is going to get hurt or something like that if yeah, he was honest about it because he was very nervous <laughs> and he kept looking to the side because somebody <laughs> was telling him or maybe they had a gun pointed to him saying if you don't say the right thing I'll shoot you they might have had her bomb and his mom and bondage and about to shoot or something and he would do some sick ass shit. But abuse is real and you know that from my YouTube channel. But anyway, in the dream, what did he teach me in the classroom? This is what he said. He had a stick. Yeah. And the stick turned into like a big ass like a like a big ass laser fucking, pointer or something? Not laser pointer. It turned a into pointer. like a, a pool. A pool cue. Like one of the big ass pool things that you pool shoot. Sticks pool sticks. Shoot pool, yeah. And he smacked this okay, it was all brick at first. He smacks this brick, and this glass window shows up. But when this glass window shows up, in the glass it said, it said this. It said, "Meditate to lucid dream to open your third eye." And then he went, "Pay attention." When he went, "Pay attention," like this lightning bolt went yeah. like that. <laughs> it just went out and out. I was like, "Oh shoot! What the hell is that?" That's cool. You know. And he was just like, pay attention. And then I was like, okay. And I don't know. When he said pay attention, and it, this lightning bolt shot out like a hand, like it was like a whoosh, like that. And I was like, okay. I got I got the message. You know, I remember that. that shoot, I paid attention enough for it to, I remember that shit. Yeah. You know, and, but so, well, have you, have you tried meditating in lucid dream to open your third eye? Eh, no. <laughs> yeah, I do. I meditate though. Actually, you know, I I meditate. I meditate. I try to lucid dream, but when I get in a lucid dream, I don't actually say open my third eye. So I kind of get caught up in it. Yeah, I you know I've had experiences with. Uh, actually, I had an experience with the um, 
lucid dream. But I think one of the reasons why, I mean, I have done meditation for a, a while, like I think a year or so. Well, a year. I said like, now I'm to like a year or something with meditation. And I've meditated and stuff, playing around with different methods and stuff with meditation. And, you know, I've tried third eye methods and stuff. But I will say one thing that I think is has really um, that helped me with lucid dreaming too, because I had lucid dreams and stuff. But one thing that I did recently was we took that Reiki level one class, and me getting attuned to it, I think it contributed to me having lucid dreams because I had a lucid dream. I wasn't even asleep like five minutes, and I had like two dreams. One, of, I had one dream, then you know about eating with my family, and then um, my dad had a plate. So I went to go get my dad a plate, you know, because he was has some fish, like a fried fish or something, like catfish or something, and he was eating it. And I went to get him a plate because it was on the table. And so I went to go get him a plate, and then all of a sudden, I find myself walking to this door. And then I go open this door. I guess it's like a bedroom door or something. And then the room, there was a room with a bed, and I guess my mom was supposed to be in her sleep, but my mom wasn't there, and I got, like, pretty dead because my mom wasn't there and stuff. And then so... She wasn't in there, so I saw this other door, and there was this door um, that looks like the bedroom door I walked through before, but this door has some light behind it or something like that or whatever. Um, and so I thought, oh, let me just lock this door. Maybe my mom's in there or something. So I opened the door, and it's the bedroom. It's another bedroom. It looks just like the bedroom I just left. But I will tell you the feeling I had when I walked in that room I felt like this energy on my body and stuff like that. And I was like, I had this instant knowing that I was, I knew instantly I was in a lucid dream and I said, I'm dreaming. And I said, oh my gosh, this is a lucid dream. I'm, I'm in a lucid dream. And I said it and the dream was over. I was like, what? <laughs> no, come back. And I woke up, you know, so it's like, damn. Man, I really could have did something. And I think that's what some lucid dreams can do where they'll end once you're aware. Because then, you know, and you have to do something to try to stay in it or something. But I think it'd be kind of interesting to astral project at some point whenever I get around to it. I may have, but I may just not know that I have done it before. But yeah, once you start getting into like to like the whole kid thing, is it's not spiritual. Um, if anybody's downloading these videos on FLVTO on FLV2, uh, I realized that because when I try to download videos over two hours, it won't let you. So I'm going to try to end the video. Yeah, we can go ahead and end the video. That's... Because yeah, you we'll won't be able to download it through FLV2 through the internet um, if it's over two hours. So but I, we'll, we'll, we'll end the video, though. We just had like a lot of stuff. But yeah, definitely comment to us if you have any any um, questions or concerns. Likes we're not really concerned about. Yeah, you can subscribe are. to us if you want to follow our videos. But Comments let us know, like Anwan said in the video he had. It lets us know what you're thinking, if you have any questions or concerns. And you can give us some other ideas about uh, things we can do videos on. Maybe we talked about in this video that maybe you want to know more about what we think about it and stuff like that. Yeah. And stuff. I mean, we're, we're also open about talking about our, our uh, process toward our progress toward our spiritual journeys and stuff like that. So it's open our third. We can talk about that too. It just depends on what you want to hear. Now, if you're a Christian, it's just going to come and say a bunch of bullshit. I don't think you're prepared for that because, you know, you're going to be hearing some Bible verses if you really, you know, if you really want to push us there, we will we will actually open that Bible, something you don't want to. So, you know, just know we'll do it <laughs> and we're not afraid to do it and you're not going to scare us or make us feel bad or make us feel like we're going to go to hell or, or something like or that. Or say some old bullshit like, you are going to have to face Jesus at the end. Okay. Jesus. Well, you Where? you know you're going to have to face him at the end. Have you? Have you? Is that is that is that what's happening? Is did that happen to you? Is that what's happening? Because I keep on hearing all these fucking stories about people fucking and having their death experiences and they're dying. They're not seeing no Jesus. They're not seeing no devil. And they're not seeing no Satan. So, I, that, I, you're wrong. Because yeah. real actuality evidence shows that that's not what they're seeing. So yeah. you might as well come up with something else to say. Yeah. Rather and, than try to scare people because because they don't know what they're going to see when they die. So you think that's a good one to use. You're going to meet Jesus in the end. In the end, you're going to have to face him. That's not what people have been saying. It's too late. That lie's exposed. Next. Not, it already is. So. Next? Shit. Yeah. So, I mean, 
If you if you do, what you gonna say now? Yeah, if you leave a comment and it's it's like something where you're gonna try to bash the video, like you're gonna say abortion or just another. If you're gonna say something, just be prepared for us to say it. And you know what? We might even make a video. That might be something we'll do. We'll make a direct video and we will use what you said. And we might even refer to your name on YouTube and what you said. And we'll talk all about that. That's, a new, that's another video. We'll actually do that. So if you want us you to get do your that, fame, yeah, you get your 15 minutes of fame, but we actually willing to sit behind what we Please say. Go ahead and hit that print screen button <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and make a picture out of the comment you said and post it on up there. Yeah, so we so everybody knows it's you. You know, a lot of Christians don't do that. They they don't want to get up in front of the camera and say nothing. They ain't supposed to be on social media no way. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. It's not supposed to take you seriously. If, yeah. <laughs> shit. What you doing with a Facebook? What you doing on a YouTube account? You ain't supposed to be exposing yourself to sin no way. You're sitting. So how you gonna be on our backs? Yeah, you supposed to be in the woods somewhere trying to make something else. Bottom of the line is that even if we did turn around and start going to church and doing all the bullshit again, that don't mean that don't mean that, that you're going to do it. That don't mean that it's going to change you and make you a better Christian. No, it's no. You still going to keep doing the same shit you're going to do because nobody, nobody fucking knows you on the on the screen and you don't have videos with your face on the fucking screen and not seeing how you're living your life or how you are portraying how you live your life. Well, you really don't live anything like that. Please. Well, we're going to end the video. So this has been Butterfly Spirit 314. And Anne, your hero. And uh, if you have any comments, please let us know. And yeah. please comment them below so we can answer your comment. Whether you're on my channel, which is Butterfly three one, Butterfly Spirit 314, or his YouTube channel, Anne, your hero. Thanks Bye -bye. for watching. Thanks.